now we go for strain gaze strain gaze is the one type of resistive material resistive transducer the strain gaze strain gaze whenever strain that means force is applied the resistance of the material will be changes that is called strain gaze strain gaze if a metal conductor is stretched or compressed the resistance changes that is r equal to rho l by a you know that resistance of any material is given by rho l by a when length changes resistance also changes on account of fact that both the length and diameter of conductor changes also there is change in value of resistance of the conductor resistance of the conductor when it is subjected to stress this property is called piezo resistive effect it is piezo resistive effect we are using in strain gaze piezo resistive effect we are using we can see the diameter of any material if you apply the force the diameter length or a small change in length or you can observe that you can see here consider the force is applied for this material then small change in length delta l that effect is known as piezoelectric resistive effect the length of the conductor will be changes that is called as strain gaze works on the principle of whenever force is applied strain is applied the the properties will be changes that is length diameter all will be that is the principle of strain gauge the strain gauges we are using in load cells to measure the weight of an object the strain gauges we are using as a load cells in weighing balances weighing bridges we are using strain gauges that is load cells are made with strain gauges what is load cell a load cell is a transducer that uses strain gauge principle a load cell is a transducer that used to create an electrical signal when magnitude is directly proportional to force being measured whenever the vehicle is comes to load cell or weighing balances the load cells produces electrical signals that is strain gauge when you apply the force the resistance will be changes based on resistance changes the voltage will be changes if you apply the voltage for some material that is strain gauges the various types of load cells we are using hydraulic load cells pneumatic load cells and strain gauge type load cells the most common type being weighing bridges weigh bridges you can see in the towns and cities to weigh the lorry weight or any vehicle weight if you want to see we are using load cells strain gauge these are the some types of load cells which are used in weighing bridges the outer cell protect the gauges from damage and rings on either side there are so many types of we are using load cells that is when when you apply the force the resistance of the property of the material will be changes by changing the dimensions of it length or diameter or equal to rho l by a we are using that the strain gauge we work uses this principle and what is gauge factor for a small change in resistance what is the length if the length deformation changes delta l or delta r is the change in resistance the or delta d is the diameter of uh, material it changes it is defined how to define gauge factor let us see strain gauge factor the strain gauge one of the definition is gauge factor it is defined as the ratio of per unit change in resistance to per unit, per unit change in length the gauge factor is defined as if you apply the what is the change in resistance a small change in resistance is delta r where is the r is the length of r is the actual resistance of material change in resistance per unit change in resistance to per unit change in length the change in resistance for a small change in length is known as gauge factor that is per unit change in resistance to per unit change in length is known as gauge factor it is very important to know theoretically what is gauge factor delta r by r delta l by l delta r by r delta l by l a simple formula we have to remember that is gauge factor where actual length of the resistive material is l actual resistance is r if you apply the force what is the change in resistance that is delta r 
The derivation of gas factor, it is very important point of uh, exam point of view. Let us see that. The derivation for strain gas, uh, which is very important uh, point, important topic is the change in value of resistance of strain gas. You can see that normally the strain gas uh, original length is L. We assume that L is the length of the strain gas, A the area of cross section, D is the diameter before being strained. Before applying the force, what is the diameter is D. By applying force or strain, it produces a change in dimensions uh, as shown in figure previously what we shown. The same we can see. By applying the strain, it produces change in dimensions. That is, before applying the tensile force, we are applied the tensile force or force or strain. Then what is the change in length is delta L. L is the change in length. You can see that. Delta L is the change in length. Delta A is the change in area. A small change in area is uh, delta A. Change in diameter is delta D. Delta R is the change in resistance. You can apply the force for this material then the change in dimensions the change in dimensions you can see now delta normal diameter is d d minus delta d is the change in diameter whereas delta l is the small change in length and we applied the force these are the terms we assume to derive gas factor normally what is the resistance of the material we can see we, we know that before applying the strain unstrained gas is r equal to rho l by a that is the resistance of a material is rho l by a when gas is subjected to positive strain its length increases while its area of cross section decreases already we saw in the diagram in order to find how delta r response on material the visible quantities are differentiated strain with respect to s in order to find delta or how changes on the material differential strain differentiated strain with respect to s we have to apply that is dou r by dou s equal to rho l by l length is changing area is we assumed that s surface area instead of a we assumed that s rho dou l by dou s that equal to it is normally under normal conditions rho do l by do s a and rho l by a square d a d s plus l a do do p by do s where r equal to rho l by a dividing the equation one this equation we have to remember directly we came to equation that uh, there is a lot of material lot of theory is there before this equation simply remember rho l by a r equal to rho l by a dividing the equation one by rho l by a what you will get dou r by dou s that is rho divided by rho l by a rho by a dou l by dou s rho l by a minus if you divide then finally we can say 1 by r dou r by dou s that equal to 1 by l dou l by dou s minus 1 by a dou a by dou s plus 1 by rho dou p by dou s we can write from me make it as equation number 2 from equation 2 it is evident that per unit change in resistance is dou r by dou s per unit change in resistance is dou r by rho s per unit change in length is dou l by dou s Per unit change in area is dou a by dou s. Per unit change in area is dou a by dou s. Now a equal to pi by 4 d square. That already you know that for a cylinder what is the area pi by 4 into diameter square. Similarly we applied a equal to pi by 4 d square. Dou a by dou s equal to 2 pi by 4 d square dou d by that we can write 2 pi by 4 d dou d by dou s that make it as equation number three after that we go for 1 by a da by ds that is finally we obtain 2d by dou d by dou s now equation two can be written as 1 by r dr by ds 
finally we can write like this according to poison's ratio and strain strength of materials we are using here the poison's ratio equal to lateral strain by longitudinal strain the formula for that poison's ratio is now lateral strain is dodi by dodi longitudinal strain is length change in length that is do l by l we can write according to poison's ratio do d by d equal to minus u do l by l that we can write 1 by r dr by ds uh, that is make it as equation number 7 for a small variations in the above relationships can be written as do r by r equal to we can write like this for a small variations in the above equation delta r by r we can write like uh, equation 8 the gauge factor is defined as simply remember this gauge factor gauge factor is defined as delta r by r delta l by l from that delta r by r can be written as gauge factor into delta l by l delta r by r equal to gauge factor into delta l by l is known as strain it is known as delta l by l l is known as epsilon epsilon is known as strain here now the gauge factor can be written as dividing the equation 8 that is delta l by l on both sides you will get uh, the equation of gauge factor let us see that the gauge factor equal to delta r by r that equal to delta l by l equal to 1 by 2v plus this is the derivation regarding gauge factor gauge factor simply remember change in resistance change in length the ratio of change in per unit length to change in per unit resistance is known as gauge factor change in resistance divided by change in length is known as gauge factor simply for that uh, equation this equation is very important how to derive this now we go for thermistors thermistor is a temperature temperature resistance Tem whenever temperature changes its resistance also changes already you know that uh, resistivity of the material depends on temperature a thermistor is a type of resistor whose resistance depends on temperature whose resistance depends on temperature the word thermistor is the combination of thermal and resistor the thermistor is a temperature sensing element and manufactured with metallic oxide such as manganese nickel cobalt copper and iron etc these are the materials which exhibit which exhibit long change in resistance large change in resistance proportional to large change in temperature alloys are zero temperature coefficient whereas semiconductors are negative temperature coefficient metals are having positive temperature coefficient alloys have zero temperature coefficient whereas metals are positive temperature the range of thermistor is minus 90 degrees centigrade to the range of thermistor is minus 90 degrees centigrade to 1 plus 130 centigrade or earlier range of thermistor is minus 20 to plus 120 degrees the resistor or thermistor symbol is like this a resistor and variable resistor a symbol is the resistances of various materials are negative temperature coefficient have what are the materials we have negative temperature coefficient semiconductors if you use semiconductors negative temperature negative temperature means when temperature increases resistance will decreases when temperature increases resistance will decreases those are called as negative temperature coefficient positive temperature means when resistance when temperature increases its resistance also increases temperature increases its resistance also increases those are positive temperature positive temperature coefficient as metals metals having positive temperature coefficient whereas semiconductors have negative temperature alloys have zero temperature coefficient zero temperature means whenever you apply the temperature alloys does not change the resistance hence we are using alloys as the materials for different types of uh, where temperature dependent and not depends on temperature 